If you are in a low coastal area, set your evacuation route. If this had been a real emergency, you should follow evacuation routes. Move to higher ground. Inland now. Do not delay. Do not return until directed to do so. Tune in to your local radio stations for further instructions. Hi, my name is Pete Rydell, President of Reliable Emergency Shelters. Often I'm asked how I got involved with the Rescue Pod. A little background about me, I joined the military when I was 17, I rose quickly to become a sergeant at 20, and became the safety non-commissioned officer for the 834th Aviation Support Battalion and the 115th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment Mitigating Risk. After the Army, uh, I worked on a few defense advanced research uh, project agency missions and worked with a number of three-letter agencies at a technology startup in Portland, Oregon. At DARPA, we brought mission-critical technology to protect our soldiers on the battlefield in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mitigating risk and helping save lives on the battlefield was the main draw I had to the rescue pod. I was introduced to Camus Washington inventor and fellow Army veteran Randy Harper and it was a no-brainer to get behind. It just made sense. With the risk of tsunamis locally and abroad, and lack of high ground for people to escape to, Randy had a solution. Today I run the day-to-day -day operations of reliable emergency shelters and manufacturing the rescue pod that we proudly make in Vancouver, Washington. The rescue pod is designed to hold two people in the event of a tsunami or a massive flood. They both get in through the top of the rescue pod, they get into safety seats, and then strap on their harnesses. According to Randy, the rescue pod is weighted down with 10 cubic feet of foam all at the bottom. This is designed so that it rights itself in the water and the exit is always facing up. There's enough room under the seats for portable oxygen and food rations. Always lands upright. 